We do have the sea of blue of the reviewing table. I'm going to break it up with some cool stuff. First up, a classic G-Shock. The DW5600 series. I bought my first one in 1994. I don't know if this one is it. I think it was a different one I bought in Saudi Arabia when I was in the Air Force. It had a gold-toned LCD screen. It was a European-only version that I was able to get in the Mideast. And sadly, I don't have that watch anymore. But this is the same watch. It's just a standard LCD display. I will tabletop this separately. But it's still cool. If you think otherwise, think again. The older G-Shocks actually are cooler now than ever. So super cool. There we go. Put that right there. I need a gun. What will I put on there? How about a Canik TP9SF in FDE? Shown a lot because I do love this value combat handgun. Awesome. And we got the shark patch here. Nothing fancy, bigcartel.com. And now we talk again about another CRKT knife. What? I just reviewed one, the home front, and it is a home run. No pun intended. Home run, home front. No. This one actually was very much beloved by John the TMP. Yeah, we had a get-together the other night. We fondled all types of gear, guns and knives, <laughs> and it was fun. We had a good time. And I broke this knife out. It is the K290 Prowess, and he loved it. It was like his favorite knife I showed him that night. I was like, uh, of, among the newer blades that I have in inventory for a review. And he's like, oh, dude, that knife is awesome. I want a tabletop of it. And I was like, you got it, bro. I will expedite it. And here it is. We're going to talk about the K290. And it is excellent. Another Ken Onion designed CRKT knife. I was handling this blade and it reminded me of... I'm trying to remember the name. I've sold the knife and I, I reviewed it years ago. I have sold a lot of blades to make money for other ones. Uh, I think it was a Kershaw Blackout. I think. I think it was like that uh, That one or similar to that. But it kind of reminds me of that knife. Look at the blade on this. It's so beautiful. Aus 8 steel. Medium quality stainless steel. And John was saying to me the other night, he's like, well, what? You know, I know guns, but I don't know steels. I mean, what is the best steel to have in a knife? You know what I told him? And I'll tell you guys the same thing. You may be surprised I'm going to say this, but it doesn't really matter. In a modern era, I'm talking we live in a modern world for what we do day to day. I don't see a lot of guys putting a lot of use on their knives. Now, if you're a tradesman, different. Maybe certain military members, different. You live in Alaska as a frontiersman, as a homesteader, different. You're going to put some wear on your blades. Then I would recommend one of the higher cpm blades like s30 s90 but for i don't know edc and in the modern era os8 would just be fine vg10 would be fine 8cr 13 mov would be great 154 cm do i like the higher end blades yeah i do i do but if they're going to cost me an arm and a leg not so much i don't so the os8 would be fine i think as crkt does it or has it done for them out of let's see taiwan no surprise it's excellent. And this is a beautifully finished blade right here. Just beautifully finished. It's just a polished finish. See some machining marks on it, but not too bad. The edge out of it is total perfection on the prowess. Total. Great belly. It almost, to me, looks like a blend between a Spyderco blade and... I don't know, some other sort of drop point blade, but it's not either one of those. It's kind of its own creature, and that's typical of an onion design blade. I wish I had the older ones just to compare, and I'm not going to dig through the hard drives to roll in footage of them, but my all my older original KRVs been out there like 10 years. They're still out there, and they still apply. I stand by the, the stuff I said then. I like how they put the model number on here. This is a flat ground blade. There are some flats right here for sharpening. Super excellent. Unsharpened swedge. There is some jimping topside, and it sucks. 
It does. It's there's no traction. There's some attempt at jimping the liners and the top of the handles. Yeah. But that's okay. I mean, this is an EDC blade. That's where I squarely put it as an EDC knife. Not not a tactical blade, not for me. Let's look at the speed of deployment on this flipper design. It's pretty excellent. I'm not really demonstrating that super excellent in super excellent fashion. One thing I love, and this is a pet peeve of mine, is that the, the, the flipper is not sharp. I do think it could be a little bit taller so we could access it a little more readily. Unique pivot points here. Uh, unique, it's, you know, what is that, yin and yang going on there? <laughs> uh, I, I, I like cool pivot points, but I don't want to have to use a special tool to, you know, adjust them. This is a standard, I think, on this side. Centering of the blade right here tension no tenacious bite on that one excellent lock up totally solid no side to side here's your timing on the captured liner lock of what are sadly and I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed with this FRN handle scales uh, why do you care nothing because I don't think a lot of manufacturers get FRN correctly there are some like Spyderco that do it great that they have high traction, but you're really not going to get good traction out of this FRN, you know, handle scale here. You're just not. There's it's it sucks. No sharp transitions though. Big lanyard hole. You can't take it apart. There's a backspacer here, and looking inside, I don't think there's any skeletonizing going on there, which will make the knife weigh a little bit more than it should. 4.6 ounces. I still to this day like a knife that weighs under four ounces for this size. Now, if it's a bigger knife, then it's different. But I'm saying for, you know, a size, a knife size like this, eh, give me something lighter. What would be in the ballpark? Three ounces. This is a 3.3 inch blade. Yeah, three ounces. But it's not a showstopper for me. It's not at all. Now, it might come with some different color variations. I'm not sure. The black and the polished blade, very excellent. I love it. It's a good looking knife, it really is. Uh, here's the downside, well, another minor downside of the knife is that it is tipped down and you are forced with this clip in that position forever and always. Now, it's not bad that it's tipped down because some of these knives, and I have said this in some other KRVs, they carry better tip down. They do. So, Putting the clip here is really awkward because of how the handle is shaped. So you'd have this real sharp point coming out here. It carries better that way. It, you know another knife that is like that? And I wonder if I have it here. Dang, I might. Let me check my pocket. I have knives everywhere. I do. Awesome. Uh, the large Skyline. Boom! I have it. This is a competitive option, by the way. Blade HQ has this color variation. I think it is a Blade HQ Special Edition. Highly recommended. And 8CR13 MOV steel in this variation. But here we go. This is what I'm talking about. So this is a knife that I finally warmed up to it being carried tit down because of how the handle is designed. Not preferred by me. I still like tip up. I always will. But with certain handle sets, it makes more sense. And the prowess is that way too. There you go. And as far as the clip goes, it's non-goofy, non-Wizard of Oz. It's thick enough, I think, for tactical pants. It might be a little bit broader, but I could say the same thing about the Kershaw clip, couldn't I? And since we're talking about it, we will continue the theme of competitive options against a CRKT Prowess K290. Uh, let's see, John, what other knife would I recommend you consider... In this price range which is about $55 mm, well I just showed this in another review so it's here on the table how about the assisted opening SOG zoom would you prefer that over the prowess oh yeah I would now the downside to the zoom is that it does have a very small button here to retract it but it is not an auto knife it's an assisted opening and you can get to that dual thumb stud readily you can't swap over the clip. And this is what I'm talking about by a thicker clip for tactical pants. This is a good 
example of what I'm talking about on the SOG Zoom. So compare the two clips. See what I'm saying? And some of those tactical pants have like two, three layers of fabric. So fitting a pant, you know, your knife clip over it can be challenging at times. But this does have functional jimping. A very unusual organic blade. It might be harder to sharpen. This too, I believe, is OS8, cryo-treated OS8 by SOG. It's thinner. It's a little bit lighter. Uh, I just love the zoom. I really do. It's a competitive option. And then we will go with... Oh, this is an interesting option. How about the Inland EL06? I mean, this is a Taiwanese produced blade. This is a Chinese produced blade, so it's in the same region. This one's like 26 bucks if you can find it. It is an homage to a Chris Reeve large Sabenza, although it's very different in its construction. It is a liner lock, but the blade shape is kind of like a Sabenza. This is a cool knife. Which one would you prefer between the two? Nothing fancy. Hmm, interesting, interesting question. I like the thinner handle of this versus a broader Ken Onion design handle there. I like the thinner blade. I'd probably go with the EL06, to be honest with you. I would. The steel is, I think, 913 CRMOV on this one. I think so. It's right there. That's, uh, but I've always loved the Sabenza style blade. This is wearing my edge, by the way. You can see how that 8CR, 9CR sharpens up so nicely. It's a really great steel. I love it. Um, there you go. couple competitive options, odd ones. I wish I had fresher blood to show you, but generally if I'm loaning the knife, I get it back, so I don't have a lot in inventory. But that being said, uh, I think, John, dude, you'd be smart to get this knife. It's a great knife. It is. As long as you're good with the weight, I think you are. The blade steel is excellent. The belly is great. The fit and finish of this knife, the lockup, the timing, and for the price, uh, it's it's a great knife. It is. The only thing I wish it, it were, like I said, it's a little bit lighter. Uh, other than that, it's a win. Nothing fancy.